Welcome to our ERC Virtual Meet the Expert session, where I am pleased to host Patrick van der Voorde, who is member of the Ethics Guidelines Writing Group. Patrick, good morning. Good morning, Nicolas. Patrick, Hi. could you explain the particular ethical context during this COVID-19 pandemic? Well, context is really the key word. COVID is a pandemic that worldwide generates morbidity, mortality, the responsible virus is highly contagious and importantly it's a new disease meaning that we still have actually limited knowledge now even if it's a global disease there are definitely regional differences and there are differences in prevalence there are differences in healthcare organization resource availability and there are differences with regard to the legal religious socio-cultural context background so any guideline we make should be interpreted within this regional context. It cannot be global as such. And we also have to be aware, and we want to emphasize as ethics writing group, that not everything is COVID and that there are a lot of other life-threatening diseases that are now at risk of being treated suboptimally. Uh, and we cannot allow this to happen. Okay, with regard to COVID, Patrick, what is the particular balance between benefits for the patients and risk for the healthcare provider? Well, such a balance between benefit for the patient and risk for the provider has always existed, and we are aware of that. But it's obviously very real during the pandemic. Now, uh, the majority of healthcare providers consider themselves to have a uh, duty to the patient, like by their Hippocratic oath, uh, but it's the opinion of ERC writing group and a lot of other people that healthcare providers obviously also have a duty towards their surroundings, their colleagues and society as a whole uh, by staying available and by avoiding uh, to become themselves a source of spread. What is the real problem is that we do not know uh, the true harm of, of performing or not performing, for instance, CPR with only droplet precaution or uh, CPR when you already had previous contact with the victim. Or on the other hand, delaying CPR in a patient that eventually does not have COVID-19. Um, indeed, we have to be aware that a lot of our cardiac arrest patients will not have COVID-19 and that guideline changes at that moment uh, might negatively impact the outcome of the patient. And we should aim our guidelines at those for whom COVID cannot be ruled out. Okay, so yeah, should we have specific ethical considerations for resuscitation during this pandemic? Ideally, no. Uh, it's, a, it's the opinion of the writing group that resuscitation is and always has been a conditional treatment, meaning that uh, local healthcare systems implement criteria for, for instance, withdrawing or withholding CPR, that they uh, put an important focus now in this crisis, but also previously an important focus on advanced care planning, and that um, they try, and this is important from an ethical perspective to uh, provide equal access to care to the same standards of care for all patients and this is equally true in this crisis and resource prioritization should be a last resort something you only do when resources are truly lacking in your whole region and even then only temporary never preemptive now Obviously, it can happen that the amount of available resources is insufficient for the needs. And at that moment, there will be resource prioritization. And we as a ERC writing group uh, would like to strongly emphasize that there's no ethical ground whatsoever to identify groups for whom it, for whom it is not needed to uh, evaluate their eligibility to receive resources. 
neither for inclusion or exclusion, meaning that there are no blanket criteria. You cannot say a certain profession or a certain age um, immediately is included or excluded from resources. Such a reasoning is definitely ethically flawed. And what we think is that for prioritization, decision-making teams should evaluate each individual, individual patient regardless of their COVID status, for their chances for survival and good long-term outcome, and their expected use of resources. And that must not one moment in time, but uh, on a regular basis, taking into account the values and preferences of the patient, the presumed harm benefit balance. Uh, but for each patient, regardless of their general age or profession or anything. And I think that is very important. Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick, for uh, your time. No problem. Stay safe. You're welcome. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.